Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Centre, and thank you for attending the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2016. I am Dudu Chen, your presenter for this evening. Good evening. I'm Leon Ko. I feel much honoured to be the Master of Ceremonies again for the presentation of this distinguished international award, witnessing the outstanding achievements of the laureates. The Shaw Prize is an international award established in November 2002 under the auspices of Mr. Run Run Shaw. The prize is dedicated to honour individuals regardless of race, nationality, gender and religious belief who have recently achieved significant breakouts, breakthroughs in academic and scientific research or applications, and whose work has resulted in a positive and profound impact on mankind. This annual award is now held for the 13th year running. The Shaw Prize consists of three categories, namely the Shaw Prize in Astronomy, the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine, as well as the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences. Recipients of the prize are all internationally acclaimed scholars and scientists. Each year, the selection committees and the board of adjudicators ensure that the highest standard of the selection and adjudication process laid down by the Shaw Prize is maintained. To date, 71 scientists have been awarded the Shaw Prize since its debut in 2004, enabling a great many devoted and outstanding scientists to be recognized worldwide. Nomination and judging commenced in September last year, and the results of the Shaw Prize 2016 were announced at the press conference held on the 31st of May this year, and there are six Shaw laureates. It is time for the commencement of the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to welcome our officiating guest, the Honorable C.Y. Leung, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, accompanied by Mrs. Regina Leung. Mr. and Mrs. Leung, please. invite this year's Shaw Laureates to enter the presentation hall. First, please welcome the Shaw Laureates in Astronomy 2016. This year, we have three Shaw Laureates. Professor Ronald W. P. Drever, regrettably, is unable to join us tonight. And now, the Shaw Laureate in Astronomy 2016, Professor Kip S. Thorne, please. Professor Rainer Wise, please. We now welcome the Shaw Laureates in Life Science and Medicine 2016. This year, we have two Shaw Laureates. Firstly, Professor Adrian P. Bird, please. Professor Huda Y. Zogby, please. Last but not least, let us welcome the Shaw Laureate in Mathematical Sciences 2016. Professor Nigel J. Hitchin, please. We will now invite the Chairman of the Board of Adjudicators to deliver a speech. Professor Ken, please. The Honorable Chief Executive, ladies and gentlemen, the Shaw Prize was established by the late Mr. Run Run Shaw in 2002 to honor international scientists in the field of astronomy, life sciences, medicine, and mathematical sciences. Since the first prize was awarded in 2004, many Shaw Prize laureates have gone on to gain recognition of other prestigious international awards, including the Nobel Prize. We have great pleasure in presenting to the Chief Executive, Chief Executive and Honor Guest, 
the 2016 laureates. In astronomy, detection of gravitation waves is considered the greatest discovery in decades and has required the effort of over a thousand people. As LIGO founders, the initial contributions of Ronald Drever, Kip Thorne, and Rainer Weiss are widely credited to the project's success. In life science medicine, Adrian Bird demonstrated how chemical modification of the DNA and the proteins that bind to them control gene functions. Hilda Zopi showed that gene mutation in these proteins lead to the Rett syndrome and other neurologic disorders. Mathematical Sciences 2016 is awarded to Nigel Hitchin for his far-reaching contribution to geometry, representation theory, and theoretical physics, which have made a wide impact on the field. We are indebted to the committee's selection committee for selecting these laureates. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Cannon. Please take your seat. We now invite the chairman of the selection committee for the Shaw Prize in Astronomy, Professor Peter Goldwright, to deliver a speech. Professor Goldwright, please. Lady Shaw, distinguished guests, the Shaw Prize in Astronomy for 2016 is awarded to Ronald Drever, Kip Thorne, and Raina Weiss. Regrettably, Ronald Drever is unable to join us, but we are happy to have his nephew, John Drever, representing him. Drever, Thorne, and Weiss were the primary figures responsible for conceiving and designing the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, also known as LIGO. LIGO's recent direct detection of gravitational waves represents the first probe of physics in the limit of strong gravity, where massive objects moving at relativistic velocities drive nonlinear waves in space-time. Four decades passed from conception through construction until the initial detections of gravitational waves just one year ago this month. During this interval, relevant technologies made remarkable advances, and what started as a small project expanded to require the focused efforts of more than a 1,000 scientists and engineers. But along the way, progress always hewed closely to the vision presented in the proposal that the LIGO team submitted to the United States National Science Foundation in 1989. Such a triumph of team science is perhaps only matched by the 2012 detection of the Higgs boson at CERN. Now, for those of you that are less uh, familiar with science, another way to appreciate LIGO is to compare it to cultural monuments such as the Lishan Giant Buddha and the Notre Dame, or Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Each stretched the limits of then current technology, took many decades to complete, required large teams of workers, and received government funding. For LIGO, obtaining and retaining NSF support, ultimately more than a billion dollars, was a big challenge. Moreover, it is well documented that the laureates, especially the two experimentalists, Trever and Weiss, often held different views on crucial technical matters. Two books have already been devoted to describing LIGO's development. A contemporary playwright could pen a great drama about LIGO with elements of both comedy and tragedy. It would be fitting to borrow Shakespeare's original title, All's Well That Ends Well, although that became clear only a year ago. LIGO's discovery, so this is back to science now, LIGO's discovery has added a third strand 
to the means by which we can observe the universe. What could previously only be carried out via electromagnetic radiation or energetic particles. It allows us to study phenomena where signals from existing astronomical messengers are entirely lacking. That the waves were detected were generated in the regime of strong and time-dependent gravitational fields enables us to probe the properties of black holes. Black holes have long been a feature of astronomical discussion, but almost all arguments for their existence were indirect. In X-ray binaries or in the centers of galaxies, we see objects that are too compact and massive to correspond to any alternative astronomical structure that can exist according to Einstein's theory of general relativity. But a different theory of gravity might change this conclusion. So the existence of black holes could not be demonstrated without probing directly the characteristic features of general relativity, such as the event horizon. Even to demonstrate that a horizon existed would have been a huge step forward. But LIGO has achieved this and much more, probing not only the structure of space-time in strong gravity, but also how it evolves dynamically. The results are as expected for the merger of a pair of black holes, even to the fine details of the ring-down oscillations of the horizon as the resultant single black hole settles to its final state. All this pushes the validation of relativistic gravity into a completely new regime. Thank you, Professor Gorad, and please take your seat. We now invite the chairman of the selection committee for the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine, Professor Randy W. Shackman, to deliver a speech. Professor Shackman, please. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished Shaw awardees. Human development requires that each of the genes on our chromosomes be turned on and off in precise order. This process is orchestrated by the recognition of landmarks on chromosomes, including some chemical modifications uh, of the DNA and of proteins that bind to DNA that suppress or activate gene function. Adrian Byrd discovered that one such chemical change, the attachment of a methyl group to the cytosine, or C base, in DNA, serves to mark some genes to be turned off, whereas the absence of that methyl group allows genes to be turned on. His research uncovered chromosome-binding proteins that recognize the methyl C to switch off gene function. In the 1990s, Byrd discovered five different proteins that have this binding activity, one of which, which is called MECP2, makes contact with an enzyme that removes an acetyl chemical tag from histones, a major chromosome structure forming protein. These two tags, methyl C in chromosomal DNA, and the absence of acetyl groups on histones cooperate to reinforce an off signal on genes and contribute to the epigenetic marking of genes. Working completely independent on a seemingly unrelated biological problem, Huda Zogby, a trained neurologist, made a surprising connection between one of Bird's methyl C binding proteins, MECP2, and a challenging neurological disorder, Rett syndrome. Our awardees come from quite different educational, cultural, and research backgrounds. Zogby was born and educated in Lebanon. Civil war broke out in Lebanon six months into Zogby's first year of medical school. She lived two miles from campus with her family, and before long, traveling even that short distance became dangerous. Bombs were falling everywhere in the city. You could be driving on the street and a bomb would fall right in front of you, she recalls. Zogby and her classmates nonetheless decided they wanted to finish the school year. 
They begged their professors, most of whom lived within a block of campus, to continue teaching classes. We never missed a day. We're really very grateful to these professors, she says. She was able to complete her medical training at Meharry Medical College in Tennessee. Subsequently, she was a medical resident and has remained on the faculty at Baylor Medical School since 1980. Zogby's interest in Rett syndrome developed from direct experience with patients during her medical residency. Starting with only three families with the disease, Zogby was able to map the gene locus, characterize the range of phenotypes associated with the syndrome, and determine the molecular basis as a defect in one of the methyl cytosine binding proteins discovered by Byrd. Byrd is the Buchanan Professor of Genetics at the University of Edinburgh, where he obtained his PhD in 1970 in the laboratory of Max Bernsteel. As a member of the Medical Research Council Mammalian Genome Unit, he and Edward Southern first mapped the presence of methyl groups on CPG islands in chromosome DNA, work that presaged his own further investigation of the function of methylation in the silencing of gene expression. He helped create the Wellcome Trust Center for Cell Biology in Edinburgh and served as its director for over 10 years. Subsequently, Byrd served as a governor of the Wellcome Trust, including a term as deputy chairman. On learning of his recent knighthood, Byrd said, quote, we are still a big research group and very active. We are still funded well, and our work is still published in journals. And as long as that continues, so will I. Byrd and Zogby have received numerous national and international prizes and elections to honorific societies. But the Shaw Prize is, we believe, the first that has recognized the complementary and interdependent nature of their discoveries. Their achievements show once again the power of basic science to uncover the fundamental basis of human development and disease. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shackman. And kindly take your seat. We now invite Professor John W. Morgan, member of the Selection Committee for the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences, to address the audience. Professor Morgan, please. Lady Shaw, distinguished guests, Peter Sarnak, chair of the Mathematical Sciences Selection Committee, could not be here this evening, and he asked me, as a member of the Selection Committee, to make some comments on this year's Shaw Prize laureate in mathematical sciences. Being a New Yorker, I love coming to Hong Kong, so I jumped at the chance, and here I am. Since ancient times, geometry has been at the center of mathematics, and its influence reaches across all other subdisciplines of mathematics and to subjects such as physics, chemistry, and indeed all of science. The recent observation of waves of deforming geometry moving through space-time which, as you just heard, is the basis of this year's Shaw Prize in Astronomy, is a vivid example of geometry's ubiquitous importance throughout science. The 2016 laureate in mathematical sciences, Nigel Hitchin, is a leading geometer of our time. By exploring ignored corners of geometry, Nigel has repeatedly uncovered jewels that have changed the course of developments in geometry and related areas. He has discovered elegant and natural facets of geometry that have proved to be of central importance. His ideas have turned out to be crucial in areas of mathematics and physics far removed from the context in which, in which he first developed them. His most widely influential work is the introduction of what are now called Hitchin vibrations. These are spaces of auxiliary geometric objects associated to an ordinary surface. These spaces have many special and fascinating geometric properties, and various aspects of these spaces continue to be much studied. Hitchin vibrations have also been important in number theory, where, for example, these objects were a crucial ingredient of Fields Medal winning work, and also in representation theory, that is, in the theory of how groups 
can be represented by matrices where they form a basis of a completely new branch of this subdiscipline of mathematics. Nigel's description jointly with others of the space of solutions of the Yang-Mills equations on four-dimensional space led to new approaches in both mathematics and physics to the study of gauge theories. These are theories that are of much importance in modern day high energy theoretical physics. Nigel's insight that stability of certain algebra geometric objects is closely related to the existence of solutions of nonlinear partial differential equations has now reached the state of a fundamental principle in a wide spectrum of geometric and analytic situations. In practically every corner of geometry and frequently in related fields, one finds remarkable insights, constructions, theorems, or conjectures that directly trace back to Nigel's work. On behalf of the Shaw Prize Mathematical Sciences Committee, I offer my heartfelt congratulations to Nigel Hitchin, winner of the 2016 Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Morgan, and please take your seat. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shaw Prize Award Presentation Ceremony 2016 will now begin. Tonight, we're much honored to have the Honorable C.Y. Lau, Chief Executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, to officiate at the presentation ceremony. The Shaw Prize in Astronomy 2016 is shared equally by three recipients. The first share goes to Professor Ronald Drever. Ron is credited for turning LIGO into one of the most sensitive instruments ever to be built for detecting gravitational waves. Congratulations to Professor Ronald Drever and thank you, Professor John Drever. The other recipient of the Shaw Prize in Astronomy 2016 is Professor Kip Thorne. The simulations were absolutely crucial for being able to extract the information that comes with the waves. I thought it was likely the first thing we would see was massive black holes merging. The other recipient of the Shaw Prize in Astronomy 2016 is Professor Rainer Wise. Professor Wise, please. The fundamental idea is timing light. And you just look at those times, and you will measure the gravitational wave. Gravitational radiation doesn't get touched by anything. It, it, just, it just penetrates everything. So with this, we can look deeper into the universe than we ever did before. We now invite Professor John Drever to deliver a speech on behalf of Professor Ronald Drever. Professor John Drever, please. Honorable Chief Executive, Mrs. Shaw, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, as Professor Ronald Drever's youngest nephew, it's with tremendous pride that I accept this award and I thank the Shaw Prize and the Foundation and the Selection Committee on his behalf. Every Christmas, Ronald would visit us in Edinburgh and Scotland traveling from California. He would talk passionately about pulsars, neutron stars, and black holes, and share his quest for gravitational waves. It was fantastic and inspiring. In July, we held a party for Ronald. He was surrounded by family members, including six grandnephews and nieces. And despite being diagnosed with dementia several years ago, he was fully alert and enjoyed the day immensely. And despite sadly missing this extraordinary award ceremony in person, we managed to create a real sense of occasion for him on that day in Scotland. Next weekend, I will visit Ronald and tell him all about the special events we are having here. 
I particularly look forward to delivering this prestigious award to him, which I'm sure he'll wear with pride. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Drever, and please be seated. We now invite the Shaw Laureate in Astronomy 2016. Professor Thorne, please. Honorable Chief Executive, Mrs. Shaw, colleagues, and friends of science, it's a huge honor to share this Shaw Prize in Astronomy with Rainer Weiss and Ronald Drever for conceiving and designing LIGO. I'm grateful to the Shaw Foundation, the, its Board of Adjudicators, and its Astronomy Selection Committee for this great honor. Of course, we're actually here because LIGO has discovered gravitational waves, opening up an entirely new way to observe the universe, a way that will be important for decades and perhaps centuries to come. That discovery, in fact, is the result of decades of very difficult work uh, by a superbly skilled team of more than 1,000 scientists and engineers, uh, our colleagues in the LIGO-Virgo scientific collaboration. It is they, in fact, who deserve this, the primary credit for this discovery, and so I'm extremely grateful to them. Indeed, I regard the Shaw Prize as rightfully more theirs than ours. LIGO began in the early 1980s as a collaboration between Caltech, MIT, and the U.S. National Science Foundation, and I thank those three great institutions for their firm support over several decades of time. The U.S. Congress gave its first big investment of taxpayer money in LIGO in 1992. From then until now, Congress has backed us unwaveringly, regardless of who is in power, Democrats or Republicans and has invested more than a billion dollars of U.S. taxpayer money in our project. For this, we obviously are tremendously grateful, and also for the enthusiasm of so many of the American public. And most of all, I personally want to thank Ray Weiss, the primary inventor of LIGO's gravitational wave detectors, who attracted me into this project 42 years ago, and Ronald Drever, who made crucial experimental inventions for LIGO and worked hand in hand with Ray and me in the early years to bring LIGO into being. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Thorne, and please take your seat on stage. We now invite also the Shaw Laureate in Astronomy 2016, Professor Wise, please. Chief Executive Learn and Mrs. Shaw, and ladies and gentlemen, I thank the Board of Adjudicators and the Astronomy Selection Committee for the honor of being named the recipient of the Shaw Prize. I view it as a recognition of the work of a large group of people, engineers, scientists, administrators, and students who made LIGO work. There were critical people at many levels, starting with the scientists and administrators that made the very difficult decision on how to spend the public money and could have, who could have been accused of being foolhardy when they decided to support a project with such enormous technical hurdles as measuring a strain of 10 to the minus 21. A displacement of one thousandth the size of a proton over a distance of four kilometers. And that, in a quest for sources such as coalescing compact binaries, objects one could not be absolutely sure existed, even in this universe. It took courage at the NSF and in the institutions that supported the research. It becomes even more remarkable when one considers the times involved and the continuity of the support that was given. The initial proposals for work related to LIGO were made in the early 1970s with a significant large investment in the mid-1990s, followed by a detection in 2015, a span of approximately 40 years of unwavering support. The project was also fortunate in being ultimately directed by Barry Barish, who made the transition from tabletop to large-scale science, which was required to succeed. Thank you. Now comes the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine 2016. This year, the award is shared equally by two recipients. The first share goes to Professor Adrian Bird. Professor Bird, please. 
Using a series of biochemical tricks, what we found was that there were proteins that bound to our DNA when it was methylated and not when it wasn't methylated. One of those proteins was MECP2. <laughs> recipient of the Shaw Prize in Life Science and Medicine 2016 is Professor Huda Zokbi. Professor Zokbi, please. I then met Ashley, a child with Rett syndrome, which at the time we did not really know about the syndrome. The fact they were all girls still convinced me at least that it is maybe on the X chromosome. Firstly, we would invite Professor Adrian Bird to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Bird, please. Honorable Chief Executive, Lady Shaw, distinguished guests, it's really an enormous uh, honor for me to be able to share this prize with Huda Zogby. I feel humbled to be chosen by the selection panel from among so many eligible candidates. Since my school days, uh, I've been fascinated by DNA, and it was therefore exciting to find as a young group leader that there were still aspects of its function that were not yet understood. One of these aspects was uh, DNA methylation, which we learned how to map. Uh, it has emerged over the years that DNA methylation patterns establish a so-called epigenetic landscape across our genome that mediates the way genes work. One of the proteins that reads DNA methylation landscape is MECP2, or MECP2, which my laboratory identified in 1992. A few years later, in 1999, uh, Huda Zogby's laboratory discovered that mutations in the gene encoding this protein are the almost exclusive cause of a profound neurological disorder called Rett syndrome. Suddenly, our Blue Skies work had clinical relevance as well. By using animals that accurately model the human disorder, we could ask if Rett syndrome might be reversible. To everybody's surprise, a severe, uh, severe symptoms disappeared when we restored the missing uh, NECP2 gene, meaning that Rett syndrome is in principle curable. Needless to say, our work over the years has depended on many talented and dedicated colleagues and, of course, on the international community of scientists to which we belong. I'm particularly grateful to Edinburgh University, who have uh, backed our work for so long, and to those who've generously funded it, including the UK's Wellcome Trust and the Rett Syndrome Research Trust. The latter is a US-based charity run by parents of, of girls with Rett Syndrome. What we all now want is to find an effective therapy that will make uh, this one of the first curable neurogenet neurogenetic disorders. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bird, and please take your seat on stage. We now invite the Shaw Laureate in Life Science and Medicine 2016, Professor Huda Zogby, to deliver her acceptance speech. Honorable Chief Executive, Lady Shaw, distinguished guest, Thank you to the Shaw Prize Foundation, esteemed members of the board, and selection committee. I'm deeply honored to receive the Shaw Prize together with Professor Adrian Bird. But I would not be here today without the patients who inspired me, the mentors who guided me, and my collaborators and trainees. My deepest gratitude goes to my mentors at Baylor College of Medicine, the late Ralph Feigen, who hired me as a pediatric resident and taught me clinical scholarship, and to Marvin Fishman, who inspired me to train in neurology. My scientific journey began when I saw my first Rett syndrome patient as a young resident, driving me to shift focus and pursue a career in basic research. Rett broke my heart 
but it also intrigued me. What could be going on to rob girls of their learned skills? I was convinced that had to be genetic, so I asked the renowned geneticist, Arthur Baudet, if I could join his lab. Art took me in on and taught me how to do science. He is a dear friend to this day, and I remain forever in his debt. Over the next 16 years, many families came forward to participate in our studies and those in other labs. I'm grateful to all of them. I'm also eternally grateful to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for supporting scientists so that they can do the work they truly believe in. I'm thankful to all the students, technicians, and fellows, and in particular, one postdoc, Ruthie Amir, who took a big risk and trusted me in my conviction that this sporadic disorder had to be genetic. It was Ruthie who finally found the mutation in the MACP2 gene. I'm grateful to all my trainees who continue to work passionately to help those with Rett syndrome and MACP2 disorders. I never imagined that we would learn so much else about the brain through continued study of this rare disorder. MACP2 orchestrates the landscape of gene expression in brain cells, allowing us to learn, remember, think, move smoothly, and breathe with ease. Last but not least, my profoundest gratitude to my wonderful husband, William who has been my partner every step of the way while leading his own passionate and successful career in cardiology. His unconditional support and our lives together, raising our two beautiful children, have made my career and this award possible. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zafi, and please take your seat on stage. Lastly, we will present the Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences 2016. The award goes to Professor Nigel Hitchin. Professor Hitchin, please. Applying algebraic geometry in the problems of gauge theory could also be applied to study minimal surfaces in a three-dimensional sphere. Shaw Laureate in Mathematical Sciences 2016, Professor Nigel Hitchin, to deliver his acceptance speech. Professor Hitchin, please. Honorable Chief Executive, Mrs. Shaw, members of the Selection Committee, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege for me to be awarded this year's Shaw Prize in Mathematical Sciences. The first recipient, Xing Shen Chen, was one of my heroes, and I feel humbled to be in such distinguished company. Mathematics and physics have always gone hand in hand since our ancestors around the world gazed at the night sky and tried to understand its patterns. And indeed, the discovery of gravitational waves by our friends here used some very sophisticated mathematics, both theoretical and numerical. However, there is another interface between the two subjects. The intuition of a physicist differs from that of a mathematician and when directed at pure mathematical problems, it opens up new windows and leads to new discoveries. In the 1970s, the gauge theory of Yang and Mills entered on the mathematical scene and started a new phase in this partnership. I benefited enormously from this process. And I would like to thank those who facilitated the interaction, most notably Michael Atia, Isidore Singer, and Edward Witten. And of course, my wife and family, who over the years have had the patience to understand when things were working out and when not. The Shaw Foundation has chosen to recognize mathematical achievement alongside more practical scientific disciplines. And I am truly honored to accept the award in this field. Congratulations and thank you all laureates. We now invite our officiating guests, the Honorable C.Y. Lerk and Professor Hitchin, to stay on stage for a group photo. The Shaw Prize has been held for the 13th year running. 
thanks to unfailing support from various sectors of the community over the years. The prize has successfully achieved its goal of honouring individuals who have made significant scientific achievements. Also, we must thank two important persons who have contributed greatly to the Shaw Prize, from its establishment to the development of the award, Professor Lin Ma and Professor Chen Ning Yang. Professor Ma and Professor Yang are both founding members of the Shaw Prize, and Professor Yang had been the chairman of the Board of Adjudicators for many years. In appreciation of their contributions to the Shaw Prize over the years, we will present mementos to Professor Ma and Professor Yang. Firstly, may we invite Professor Pak Chong Ching, Council Member of the Shaw Prize Foundation, to deliver a speech to extend our sincere appreciation to Professor Ma and Professor Yang on behalf of the Council. Honorable Chief Executive, Distinguished Saul Laureus, ladies and gentlemen, before dinner commences, please allow me to say a few words on behalf of the Saul Prize Foundation. As we celebrate the award of the Saul Prizes to this year's laureates, it is well to also recall how the prize has come so far. From just the glimmer of an idea to the internationally known award that it is today, in the space of just 14 years or so. The very idea of the Saw Prize, of course, originated with Mr. Run Run Shaw, who wanted to honor individuals who have made outstanding contributions in academic and scientific research, in furthering societal progress, enhancing quality of life, and enriching humanity's spiritual civilization. Mr. Saw, a highly successful businessman, very wisely decided to seek advice from those with experience in science and in academia. Two key and senior members have been responsible for defining and shaping their sole prize in its present form. Mr. Ron Ron Shaw and also Mrs. Mona Shaw first sought the advice of Professor Lin Ma, a distinguished biochemist and former vice chancellor of the Chinese University of Hong Kong and also for many years, chairman and later senior advisor of the Board of Trustees of Seoul College in the university. With a wealth of experience in science and in academic administration, Professor Ma was the promoter of the preparatory committee of the Seoul Prize between 2002 and 2003. He was also a founding member of the Seoul Prize Council since its inauguration in November 2002 and he helped to steer the operation of the Council since 2003 until his retirement in December 2012. Mr. Saw so and Professor Ma brought on board Professor Chan Ning Yang, Professor at Large at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and also Professor at Tsinghua University. Professor Yang won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1957, has excellent taste about the best in science and vast experience about how judgment is made at the highest levels. It was upon Professor Young's advice to the Council, in particular that the three subjects were selected. For the fertility of these fields and for their centrality in the international enterprise of humanity, the standard set and the rigor of the procedures have led many to compare the Saw Prize with the Nobel Prize. Professor Yen was one of the key members on the preparatory committee for the prize, a founding member of the Saw Prize Council, and has been chairman of the Board of Adjudicators since its inauguration in 2002. But very wisely, the actual selection is delegated entirely to the three selection committees of international distinction. It is remarkable how Professor Ma and Professor Yen have been able, with seemingly little effort, to, sort, to set the Saw Prize onto the right path. On this occasion, the Saw Prize Foundation wishes to recognize their immense contributions. And Mrs. Mona Saw will present souvenirs to these two founding members. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ching. Please take your seat.
We now invite Mrs. Mona Shaw, chairperson of the Shaw Prize Foundation, to present the mementos. Mrs. Shaw, please. Regrettably, Professor Lin Ma is unable to join us tonight. His wife, Mrs. Ma, will represent him in receiving this memento. Mrs. Ma, please. We now invite Professor Yang. Professor Yang, please. Scientific research has embedded boundless possibilities. We look forward to seeing you again next year and to witness more accomplishments of distinguished scientists and scholars. Goodbye and see you all next year. Thank you. Goodbye.